Android 12 makes security and privacy front and center. The UK and the US considered new cybersecurity legislation, and 23 Android apps exposed millions of users. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for May 25th, 2021. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. We have a bunch of security updates and some legislation to get into, so on to the news. Last week during Google I.O., the company announced some new ways to help consumers stay secure while using their devices and apps. I think of this as good news for any of us security nerds who have ever struggled to get family on board with the idea of password managers and not reusing terribly bad passwords. The Chrome browser already comes with a password manager built in, which is as strong as your Google account security settings. So when you log into your Google account on Chrome, the browser password manager will work similar to any other third party ones with some limitations, but it is decently reliable and it's definitely convenient for regular users. Chrome's password manager just got an update. When you quote, check for compromised passwords, supported sites will now allow you to change the password with an assist. All you would have to do is tap the blue button and Chrome will navigate to the site and go through the process of changing the password for you. You can also control the process and change the password manually at any point of that process. It also continues to generate passwords as well. Now, all of this is supported in some third-party password managers as well, but the convenience could really help those that are not interested or not willing to download another application. The unfortunate part of security automation like this is that a lot of sites just don't support it at launch, so you will still have to manually change passwords like usual for those sites. Also, this is only available for Chrome on Android for folks in the US. Android 12 will also have some new privacy changes like a privacy dashboard that will give you an overview of permission settings and a cute little pie chart and a cleaner, more organized look at data transparency on an app by app basis. Basis. A new notification icon will indicate up in your status bar whenever an app is accessing the mic or the camera or both, along with new quick settings to toggle those permissions on or off. There's also a new setting that can change your location permissions from extremely accurate down to pinpointing you to approximate, which is useful if an application does not actually need to know exactly where you are. App permissions will be set to auto hibernate applications that aren't used to reclaim memory, revoke permissions, and force stop. And now apps can also scan for nearby Bluetooth devices without needing to access location permissions. And for a look inside the engine, which is always fun, not just at the user GUI, we've got Android Private Compute Core, which enables things like smart reply, now playing, and live captioning, all of which happens on the device and is isolated from the network. This is a sandbox for machine learning and it keeps sensitive information from being processed remotely. It's also open source. But something to note, this is entirely software based. It's not like the Titan chip, which is a hardware component. All of this is available in the Android 12 beta for pixels and other devices, but fair warning, beta operating systems may not work right. They might be buggy, so don't blame me if you put this on your main phone and something breaks. We've got some new laws being introduced to bring better security and accountability, not only just here in the US, but in the UK as well. So let's go ahead and start with the news out of the UK. So the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, or DCMS for short, is asking for folks to respond to a survey about cybersecurity in supply chains and managed service providers. This is in response to the growing concern about supply chain attacks. So this is a proposal for new rules in order to mitigate those threats. If you are wondering what a managed service provider is, that's a company that provides some sort of back-end infrastructure for clients. That could be data backup or cloud services or monitoring or security, cybersecurity, communications, logistics, transportation, all sorts of things. In the call for views, Minister for Digital Infrastructure Matt Warman states that the cybersecurity breaches survey of 2021 
2021 found that only 12% of businesses actually review risks from suppliers, and only 5% actually address the risks from suppliers. The proposed rules would put managed service providers under the same umbrella of regulations as critical UK infrastructure in regards to the UK's Cyber Assessment Framework, which is also called CAF for short. The US government has also been hard at work coming up with new laws centered on cybersecurity. Last week, the US House Committee on Homeland Security passed five different bills directed at protecting infrastructure and US organizations. These include HR 2980, which is the Cybersecurity Vulnerability Remediation Act, which would allow the government to provide remediation and mitigation strategies to infrastructure. There's also HR 3138, which is the State and Local Cybersecurity Improvement Act, which authorizes a 500 million dollar grant program for local governments for network security, HR 3223, which is the SISA Cyber Exercise Act, which promotes regular testing and assessment of networks, and then we have HR 3243, which is the Pipeline Security Act, which clarifies what the TSA's pipeline security section does and can do. Also, today I learned that the TSA is responsible for pipeline security, that was new to me, and HR 3264, which is the Domains Critical to Homeland Security Act, and this one allows for the DHS to research risks to supply chains and do reporting to Congress. So just given the names alone, it's obvious that these are in response to the recent attacks on Colonial Pipeline and solar winds. The U.S. also saw a new bipartisan bill introduced by Senators Amy Klobuchar, John Kennedy, Joe Manchin, and Richard Burr called the Social Media Privacy Protection and Consumer Rights Act. Does that sound familiar? Well, it should. That's because Klobuchar also introduced this bill back in 2019, but did not get Republican support, so it died. Now it's back and it stands a chance in the Democratic Majority Congress. Similar to what we have seen on Apple's newest iOS, this bill would force sites to give users the option to opt out of data tracking or collection and give users more control over said data. It would also require companies to notify users of any kind of data breaches within 72 hours, as well as write their service agreements in plain text that's understandable, not legal speak. With state-level bills like Virginia's new Consumer Data Protection Act and California's Consumer Privacy Act already passing, this bill does have a better chance of passing legislation this time. Big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support. And a quick shout out to Codex of Wisdom, Brian R, Slivovitz91, ASAT64, and Marty for joining the Threatwire Alliance and as always for supporting this show that you are watching right now. Patreon exclusive merchandise has also just been unlocked earlier this month as a new perk for the Threatwire Alliance. So now is a wonderful time to join the team. If you sign up this month for one of those tiers that includes the merchandise, you will automatically qualify for that first round of designs. Check out the Patreon page for more details and on to the third new story. The Threatwire Alliance actually chose this story for today's episode, so I wanted to give them a shout out. According to Checkpoint Research, over 100 million users' data was left exposed by only 23 different Android applications, all of which had a variety of misconfigurations with third-party cloud services. Now these apps include, but are not limited to, Logo Maker, Astro Guru, Screen Recorder, all of which have over 10 million downloads loads each, and other applications that have anywhere between 10,000 upwards to 500,000 downloads, like a taxi service called T-Leva, or the faxing app, which is called iFax. See, using cloud services is extremely popular amongst app developments due to everything from remote working to better management of data, faster processing for a user experience, and tons of automation. But it also comes with potentials for vulnerabilities due to misconfigurations of that data. Like how many times have I discussed, for example, AWS misconfigurations? That's a thing. 
Well, in this case, these apps were leaking data such as email addresses, phone numbers, chat messages, location, passwords, browsing history, photos, and backups. The exposure also affects developers themselves because in some cases, internal resources like update mechanisms and storage, all of that was left exposed. These kinds of leaks of data could expose users to rogue notifications, phishing attempts, even give attackers the ability to access access documents or screen recordings and more. Passwords all by themselves alone could be a serious problem. Push notification keys were not properly configured in some instances, and that could lead to an attacker pushing links onto the screen that could be used for malicious purposes. Checkpoint mentioned in their research that a few of the applications actually did update their configuration settings to fix the exposure of data, but some of them remain totally susceptible to attacks. Unfortunately, there is not a lot that users can actually do about leaks like this other than create fake information for accounts and security questions and use two-factor authentication wherever possible and make sure you're using those different passwords. I'm sure me and you know this, but there's other people out there that don't. So that's pretty much what you can do. Otherwise, we just have to hope that these Android applications actually get updated. This week on Morse Code, I've got a three-part series of pro tips for factory wiping your PC, including some command line fun. And anytime I can include command line fun and some super fun options, I'm going to. Subscribe to my channel, it's youtube.com slash Shannon Morris. And for more of that kind of content, I'm always bringing it out. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.